In 2009, I visited a small village in the region of Serra do Cipó, southeastern Brazil. At a first view, uh, the village of La Pinha da Serra seems an idyllic and isolated place. Um, however, in my first foray into the narrow streets of the village, one thing drew my attention. Some signs, uh, handmade signs, with some behavioral demands, such as uh, no cars or motorcycles uh, allowed, or bathing suits only in waterfalls. And in this first uh, day, also I, I met also a skinny young boy who approached me very much interested in the camera that I had hanging on my shoulder. And Rafael, that has 13 years old, studies in the morning at school nearby the village, and uh, in afternoon sometimes he gets some money as a tour guide. Uh, in our first meeting, uh, Rafael uh, drew a simple map of La Pinha da Serra and gave it to me uh, so that I would not get lost. And uh, he got a very close uh, companion, inseparable companion, showing me the beauty and the challenges of his world. Um, one day, uh, Rafael asked me for a picture that I had taken uh, in La Pina, and he asked also uh, if he could draw something on it. And he drew a flying saucer um, surveying the sky and told me that his village used to suffer from a permanent threat that comes from the future. He also told me that on dark nights without moon, a mysterious shining woman would appear nearby uh, a huge um, mango tree. Uh, he refers to her as the shining woman of the mango tree. And according to him, uh, her appearances are to protect the village from these external threats. Um, excited about the, the curious way in which Rafael presented me his word, I decided to give him a camera, and he got really happy. And from then on, our friendship became really close, and our forays around the village were now guided by images much more than words. And these are some images of our moments, the moments that we shared together, photographing. It was um, amazing days with Rafael. But one day, Rafael returned to the problems of the threats <laughs> of um, <laughs> spaceships and presented me a project to trap the flying saucers. The seriousness in which he, he presented me, he summarized his project, made me realize its importance for him. Um, somehow, I, I saw that there was a, 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 a close relation between the signs that I had seen in my first day, the flying saucers, and also the progress that was coming so fast to his village. And so I decided to help him in that project. But I just pointed out that I did not know anything about flying saucers or traps, and he was the, the best choice to conduct the, the the actions. So we choose the necessary material, and in a field that Rafael pointed as the, the right place, we start building our, our project, our dream. And Rafael was really anxious because he wanted to, to be ready um, before the sun goes down, in case of this night some flying saucers might visit the village. And so, in the end of the afternoon, just before the sun goes down, we celebrate the, the, the conclusion of our project. And later on, uh, no, from that moment, Rafael just placed himself in readiness with the camera in, on hand, just waiting for any possible approach of a flying saucer. And later on, uh, with, a, with some candies and, and soft drinks, we went to our project 
and we stood celebrating our friendship, the power of our friendship and the strengthening of our friendship. And that night was one of the most um, beautiful nights that I, I have ever lived, believe me. And this night I also realized that I could work with Rafael and I could wor uh, help somehow Rafael, Rafael with some other projects to that make his village uh, face and find a, a better way of facing the, the progress that was coming so fast. And so we photographed the shining woman of the mango tree. Yeah, believe me. And then we did a poster with her image and a question. Uh, the shining woman of mango tree, who believes in her? And we fixed in different points, different um, locations of the village during the night. And in the morning, uh, when the locals saw, as the locals saw the poster, uh, we saw the whole village revisit an old legend, almost forgotten. And the only only half I owe used to to fight it to be to be alive. And uh, these ghostly images, um, um, image among with a lot of others that Rafael produced were made into postcards that we put it for sale in the village and the whole money went to Rafael as the author of the, the, all the images. These are the posters and this is Rafael really happy about his project. And during the two years that I stood in La Pina da Serra, Rafael used to give me uh, little stones that bright as they reflect the sunshine and he used to put them in my hand saying take them take them with you it's a real treasure it's yours and it's a treasure and in our last day together as I had to go away to go go back to my my life outside the village uh, we climbed the mountain in front of La Pina da Serra to celebrate on its top one last time our friendship without telling him I brought with me all the stones in my pocket. And up there, I asked him if we could bury them up there, hide them somewhere on the top of the mountain. And he liked that. And I also asked if he could uh, take care of it till the day I could come back once again to the village. And this is what we did. Our treasure is still safe and secure in La Pina da Serra. I might tell you that it took for me a long time to understand the real meaning of Rafael's treasure, its real value. But fortunately, now I know, and I hope that today, somehow, I have been able to share at least one little part of it with you. Thank you so much.